In this video, I'm going to show you how to create the stack. The reason why I have two different drawings over here is this one is what your final product is going to look like. And this one is just an example to show you what you should start with. Uh, I think it might make it a lot easier for people to understand what you should be doing for the setup of this originally. So the first thing we're going to do is create a 2D sketch. And I'm going to suggest that you pick um, either the XY plane or really the XZ plane. So really, just pick the XY plane. Just the reason for that is so you line up the front properly so it's oriented the correct way. So when you go to make your work drawing, you don't have to flip the part around at all. It's just automatically set up the way you want it to be. All right, so for this one, what I'm going to do is create a line. And I'm going to click on the origin right here. Make sure it's a green dot before you click. And then I'm going to move my cursor straight up. And now I can type in my dimension. The dimension is going to be this tallest dimension right here, because what I'm doing is I'm drawing this shaded area right here, uh, the section view. OK, so we're going to go up. 1.75 all right and you can see how it's kind of off the screen now so if I press the home button we can see everything that we're working on I'm gonna click OK to exit out of that and I'm gonna show you how to change this line into a center line so I'm gonna click on it and click on this button right here the reason for that is so when I'm dimensioning I don't have to think about should I do radius do I have to do a calculation for this because everything that I have here is diameter, so I won't have to worry about any calculations whatsoever. Oh, oh I didn't save. So you click on the line, click, and then click off to the side. I think I clicked over here, so I got confused. So see how we have a long dash, short dash, long dash, short dash, and just kind of keeps repeating? So that is what a center line looks like. So now we're going to go back to our line tool. Just make sure that our center line is not selected. If it's selected, it's blue. If it's not selected, it's kind of the gray color. That's what we want, not selected. So now I'm going to draw kind of the rough idea of what this looks like. I know I'm doing a terrible job. That is OK. We're going to put dimensions in in a second. So what I'm going to do now is I want to click on this corner. And I'm going to click on the center line. The reason for that, OK, you can see how this is going all the way across now. I'm going to click underneath. And now I can put in my diameter. So the diameter for this is 0.5. All right, you can see how that automatically moved over. Our 0.5 is across the entire thing using this as the center. OK, we're going to go up this little piece for the bottom of the stack. So that's a quarter inch. And for this little edge right here, we can see that it's right here. So we're going to go there down. So that is this little dot to this edge. And that is 1.5. All right. So here's where some of you are probably like, well, what is this dimension? Well, that one doesn't quite matter yet. So we're going to go from here, go to here, go over, because that's the dimension we do know right here. So 1.25. And then I know we can't get this one, but we do have an angle. All right, so on here, we have 0.15. So 0.15 is from here to here. Uh, instead of dimensioning that way, I find it easier to click here, click here. OK. And then for this one, we have 105. So if you guys are wondering why I picked 105, OK, so we have 90 plus, oops, plus 15, 105. So the reason why I'm saying 15 is because this little wedge over here, and then 90 for over here. OK. So we have right now, everything is turned blue, so nothing is green. So we know that this shape is fully constrained, so we just made what's down here. So now we can revolve. So finish sketch, revolve. All right. The nice thing about putting in a center line is it automatically selects the axis for you. So because I only have one profile, it automatically knows a profile. Because we only have one center line, it automatically picks the axis. And because 
we want to be full, we're just going to leave it um, the default setting. So we click OK. So now we're done with this sketch on the bottom. So now we can kind of focus on what's up here. So now we're going to focus on the part that's cut in. So to do this, we're going to do it a little bit different than you guys are probably used to. We're going to create a sketch on the top. Okay. For this one, I know it's completely centered. If you're unsure, use Project Geometry. Okay, I'm just going to click on it anyways. Click on it. Click on there. You can see how the center of my um, circle right here is the exact center of this. So the origin is exactly the center. So if you know it's centered, you don't have to do the Project Geometry step. The next thing is I'm going to make sure I put in a point. Make sure that you get that green little dot. So right there, there is a tiny little, well, if I zoom in it, you really can't see it. But there's a little tiny X showing you where it is. So here we go. You might be able to see it. It turns white when I my cursor's over it. All right, so that is our point. That's all we're going to do for this. Finish sketch. Okay, you can kind of see the point a little bit better now. Yeah, a little bit. All right, so instead of using extrude, which you're used to, we're going to be using the hole tool. All right, so you can see the hole tool automatically selected that point. That's why we put in that sketch with the point. And now these are going to be some new tools that you've been using or introduced to in class. We have counterbore. So we have a drill tool, counterbore, spot face. Spot face and counterbore are very similar. Uh, this one's just a very shallow one. Normally it's for washers. And then counterbore is typically for, like, if you want the bolt, um, the head of the bolt to be flush. And then we also have countersink. So for this one, we're going to use counterbore. And we can see it stops at a distance. So instead of all through, distance. Okay. And then we can look at this. It's a flat bottom, so flat. So now that we have all of that set up, we're going to start putting in our dimensions. So from this drawing, it's a little hard to tell what everything is, uh, especially because we have arrows going every which way. So for the diameter, the smaller diameter, all right, which is this one right here, we have 0.375. And for our larger diameter, which is this top one over here, we have 0.875. All right, so that's the start of it. So now we need to kind of see what we have for depth. Well, we can see that this depth, the one for the top of it, which is this one right here, is 0.375. And for the depth for all of it, going from this very top all the way down, you can kind of see that it's this dimension minus this one. So it is going to be 1.5. Then we click OK. All right. So if we look at this, we can kind of tilt it just so you can see it. Uh, looks the same angle as here if it didn't have that little cutaway. But now we have our stack. 